Hello everyone, welcome back to a brand new video just on a guy on the internet. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing the RMS Britannia, made once again by Creepycraft City. And yeah, so we're back to Cunard, um, and here we actually have their first ever ship, um, the Britannia. And of course, this was the first ship of the Britannia class. There would go on to be six ships in total. And yeah, so here you have it. Uh, it was launched in 1840, and I know later in its career, um, it was sold to the Prussian Navy, where it was sunk as a target ship in 1880. So yeah, a little bit about its history there. And as for the actual ship uh, itself, you can see it's a very small, um, and also, you know, quite... Uh, different than uh, some of the later ships we've seen, like the Umbria and Campania. This was about 50 years before, and you can see how much the ships grew in size and changed in just 50 years. And you can actually see a few elements from the Britannia that kind of carries on to the later ships. So yeah, you know, it's again, it's all a matter of uh, improving and upscaling a design. And yeah, so, you know, very small ship, as you can see. Um, and you also notice the uh, paddle wheels as well. So there are no propellers on this ship. It's completely uh, propelled by these uh, paddle wheels. And you see uh, a very small funnel here. And yeah, you know, you got sails, of course, um, and you have these little, like, lookouts nests. There's two of them up here, which is very interesting. So yeah, you know, you got sails, you got flags, you know, you got the American flag and the uh, Cunard flag, and also the, uh, you know, British flag. Uh, four lifeboats, they're very tiny as you can see and they're completely in the uh, aft section of the ship um and so yeah let's uh start checking out some of the interior so here's the bridge um you can see that it's actually midships and it's between the paddle wheels and so it's an actual you know bridge which is where the name comes from uh so the engineers you know they can walk across from paddle to paddle, you know, make sure everything's working properly. You now you got these paddle wheels here. And yeah. So that's really all that's up here. Um, down on the upper deck, it's, uh, you got mostly crew with some passenger entrances. Uh, so at the very forward end, you have some sailors. So, and this area right here, I don't think it really existed, you know, because on the deck plans, all it shows is the uh, kind of a ladder going down from like an entrance area. So I don't think there would really be beds up here. It would just be like a little area with a ladder going down to the sailor's uh, quarters. And let's see, there's a chain locker for the... Uh, For the anchors, yep. Now you got the nameplate. Very elaborate, uh, you know, bow here. Um, very characteristic of the, uh, you know, sailing ships. And yeah, you got a skylight overlooking the uh, saloon. So we'll be getting to that later. Oh uh, yeah, you got, you know, the ladder going up. And yeah, so you got. Uh, some of these deck houses here that contain, you know, crew areas, you know, got the boat swing here, uh, ice house, so yeah, some ice to, uh, for refrigeration, and some lavatories as well. There are no bathrooms on this ship, like actual bathtubs, it's just, uh, toilets. And yeah, so you have the officer's mess, you know, for the officers, more lavatories, uh, more ice houses, and you also have the carpenter. So very simple, you know, no no portholes. Uh, 
you know, very simple accommodation. And you also have the crew entrance with a spiral staircase leading down to uh, the engineers and firemen. We'll be getting to that shortly. And you also have the engineers' mess right on the other side of the officers' mess. And yeah, so you have the four cabins entrance, so the actual passenger accommodation is only in the bow and stern. There's none, in mid there's none midships because the engine and boiler rooms completely take up the entire midsection. So, and yeah, you can see it's very simple here as for, you know, the actual passenger accommodations. Just a simple staircase here, you know, for, for painting and a clock, but, you know, that's really it. It's very basic, you know, compared to the later ships. So, you know, this is what started it all. And, you know, you have a staircase leading up to the bridge. You got skylights overlooking the actual engine room. You got a galley here, yeah, for, uh, I think, crew. And yeah, you got the butcher here. Um, you got the cow house. Hey, buddy. Yeah, you know, for uh, fresh milk. Uh, you know, you got officer. Uh, the bakehouse, you know, for baking. And the baker is conveniently right next to it, so you got two bakers. And yeah, this is yeah just a random like hatch over the uh, engine room. It's very interesting. And here, yeah, you have a vent overlooking the boiler room. Now you got the funnel here. On the other side, you got you know store, uh, the chief steward, uh, cooks, let's see, scullery, and the purser. Yep. And yeah, you can uh, notice, you know, no barber shop or doctors, so. And you got a couple staircases uh, leading up to the actual boats, you know, that are on top of the deck houses, and one just, that kind of hangs off the side here. Uh, back here you have a pantry. And an entrance, so this is for the aft section of the passengers. It's all one class, pretty much, you know, just sal saloon class. Uh, you know, no steerage or second class. And over here is the dining saloon for the saloon uh, passengers. It's, you know, very small, very compact. You know, there is at least, you know, a piano for some music, a clock. Uh, when Charles Dickens traveled on this ship in 1842, he compared the dining saloon to a hearse with windows. So, just to give you an idea of, you know, what if, what it would have been like to travel on the Britannia class. At the very, uh, you know, aft section, um, you have the captain. So, I guess a, you know, decent room, you know, for what it is. And you can see that the wheelhouse is actually at the back of the ship, you know, characteristic of the uh, sailing ships, you know, that usually had the wheel at the stern. And you also have the chief officer, which also gets a, you know, nice cabin, although I use that term loosely because definitely not luxurious or anything. You know, it just gets the job done. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the upper deck. There's not much else to really go over. You know, these crew areas you would, you know, see later on, uh, on later Cunarders. But they would kind of be moved to the uh, forward section. We kind of saw that with the Umbria and Campania. So. And yeah, so four cabins entrance. So once you go down these stairs, you just have this little saloon or lounge, pretty much. You know, you have some tables. And, you know, skylight. So. And, you know, surrounding it are actual cabins. So, and this is like probably the nicest cabin on board, you know, it has a chair and it's pretty much it. There actually is an illustration of, I think, this actual, uh, stateroom. So, you know, gives you an idea of what these would have looked like. Very basic, just, you know, wood coverings. Yeah, and here are some, you know, the smaller cabins. Very compact, very compact. You know, you got bunks and a wash basin, and that's all you're getting. And yeah, just forward of this you have servants, you know, like pretty much stewards, if you will. 
So, and that's right behind the uh, sailors. And you know, with the deck plans that I have, this whole like area looks a little bit different. You know, the cabins are not laid out like this. You know, like the uh, there's a set of deck plans on Norway Heritage, and you know they show it um, in this order, pretty simple. And then like the other deck plans that I have, that it comes from a uh, comes from like an article. Um, they show it a little more complicated. You know, there's like cabins like in like the mid section here. So who knows which are actually correct, or if there were any changes to Britannia later in her career. You know that I do not know. Uh, so you got the crew entrance. Yeah. So uh, when you go down these spiral staircases, you have you know it's very compact, not a lot of space to move around. You got some firemen for the boilers. So, so you got so you got twelve firemen. Um, you got the chief engineer, and you see no portholes because uh, of the paddle wheels. And you also have an engineer here. So just two engineers. And there's also an entrance to the actual engine room. And you can see it's very small. Um, and the boiler room and engine room were one room. And you'll also notice what's very odd is the boiler room is actually aft of the actual engines. You know, on later ships you have, you know, you usually see the boilers in front of the uh, engines, but here it's reversed. So, very interesting here. So here are the actual boilers, and you know, they connect to the uptake, to the funnel. And you know, you got some coal, yeah. That's really all that's down here on the actual Orlov deck. And so yeah, there's the crew quarters. And then going back to the uh, the stern here, you know, you have these little staircases, and you have you know more cabins. This area is a little bit larger than the uh, four cabins. You know, there's it's a little bigger. You know, you got some seating here. You know, clock. Uh, more cabins, but you know, that's pretty much the same as what we saw in the forward section. Um, so yeah. Oh, and you also have the uh, ladies' room. So you know, very small, very compact. Um, of course, you see that on later Cunarders. You know, like we saw the Umbria and Campania, of course, and also you know, kind of the Lusitania. Although it's not really the ladies' room, it's the reading and writing room, but it's almost the same thing. And yeah, so yeah, you got some you know, smaller cabins here, and yeah, and this is another kind of you know nicer room because it you know, has a little couch and kind of a dressing table, and you know it's a little bit bigger. And yeah, so kind of like a store back here, I guess. And yeah, so there's the saloon deck. So it's only two passenger decks, and then you know you go down to the Orlop deck, and you got you know crew spaces, you know, like the cargo hold. You know, on the deck plans that I have, because the deck plans that I have are, you know, general arrangement for the entire ship, even the crew areas, and the actual, like, draft is supposed to be two decks. Um, so, you know, a little uh, mistake there. You know, there would be cargo here. Um, I think it was, uh, on the upper portion, there would be, um, oh, what was it? I think it was actual, it was the mail room and space and specier room, right? So, you know, it's RMS, so there's a mail room. And I think it was just cargo space. So, yeah, this was, you know, cargo space, but, um, yeah, and then over here, there would be coal. Um, so I think there would have been a passage here. Definitely not sure I... I forgot what the deck plan showed, but it, you know, it's 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 pretty close to what it would have looked like. You know, like the coal bunkers here, and then it would have been uh, cargo on top, if I remember correctly. And then for the stern, yeah, you know, this is correct that you have the uh, coal bunker, you know, underneath here. But again, this would have been 
uh, you know, again, two decks, so on the bottom level there would have been coal, and then on the upper level there was spaces for wine, and uh, there was actually also stewards, you know, down here in, underneath the waterline. So, and also a little bit of, um, I think, cargo as well. So, yeah. And as you can see now, it's only just a rudder. There's no propellers. Uh, yeah, Britannia Liverpool. So, yeah, there you guys go. There's the Britannia. You know, this is the, uh, I think the oldest ship Creepercraft has built. It's the, you know, first Cunarder. Um, I think I mentioned this in a previous video. It would be interesting to see some of the older, you know, Cunarders from like the, uh, you know, again, the 1840s, 1850s, 1860s. Um, but as well with those Cunarders, I do have some information about those. And to my knowledge, those are basically just upscaled versions, pretty much, you know, like I've mentioned, of the Britannia class. They're very simple. Um, and, uh, you know, very similar to what you would find with this ship, for example, the, uh, Persia and uh, the Scotia are pretty much just doubled up versions of these ships. Um, they have, uh, according to the deck plans, uh, two, you know, with the, uh, dining saloon, so there'll be one, uh, aft and forward. And there might have been two classes of passengers, but I'm not sure because the actual quarters are like separated by like a wall and you also see this with other ships like the uh russia for example i know the quarters you know for for the four cabins and the aft section kind of seems separated by like a bulkhead so it's very interesting but yeah you know so for the actual britannia itself uh there's the actual uh, you know review it's a very nice ship i must say you know for the uh, first Cunarder, you know, that started it all. Uh, and not the Unicorn, because, you know, some people say that the Unicorn was the first Cunard ship because it was built in 1836, four years prior. But Cunard didn't actually uh, charter that ship until after they bought the, uh, after, they, after they built the uh, Caledonia, the third sister of the Britannia class. So, yeah, this is the first ever ship in Cunard's history. And yeah, so, you know, very nice ship, you know, good amount of detail. Maybe if we're lucky, we'll get a, uh, you know, improved version. But we'll just have to wait and see. But, you know, I would definitely like to see some of the, uh, you know, older ships before a uh, remastered version of this, to be honest. So, but, yeah, there you guys go. There's the Britannia. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, uh, you know. Leave a comment down below for any suggestions or, you know, what you thought of the actual, you know, build. And yeah, so that's going to be it for the video, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.